Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Jessica. We are starting week two of the Nona Quilt Along. And if you haven't heard of this before, it's a beginner quilt along that I'm hosting that is a perfect quilt for people who are looking to make their first time quilt or any quilter who'd like to join in. This is the Nona Quilt behind me. I designed this specifically with the first time quilter in mind. Last week was the introduction. I showed you what the quilt looked like. We talked about the schedule that we'd be following. This is a nine week quilt along. For the first two weeks, last week and this week, we are talking materials and supplies. And then next week will be the first week that we actually start working on the quilt. So throughout this week, I'll be giving you a detailed look at the supplies that you need to quilt and the materials needed specifically for the Nona quilt. Each day here on YouTube, we're gonna focus on a different group of materials. The blog post on We All Sew contains all of the information for the whole week. However, here on YouTube, I'm gonna be breaking that apart into little sections and we'll talk about a different group of materials each day this week. So for today, the first day, we're talking about sewing machines. That's the most basic equipment that you need to make a quilt. If you have a sewing machine, great, you can use it. You don't need anything fancy to make your first quilt. I recommend starting with a basic sewing machine if you don't already have one. And if you do already have one, you can use that. When buying your first sewing machine, it is difficult to decide on a machine because you don't really know the features that you might need or things that you'll look for in a machine. So you have a couple options here. If you're looking for a really good machine and are okay making a financial investment in the machine and you know that you're going to continue using it for years, I'd recommend a Bernina. That's what I sew on. They are fantastic machines that last a lifetime. You can go to a Bernina dealer and they will, you can tell them what you're interested in doing and they will show you the machines that would be great for you. You can find a great fit that way, talking with someone who knows the machines and you can relate the things that you wanna to make to them and they will guide you. If you're not ready to make a big investment in a sewing machine, there are plenty of good machines that you can buy. I love the Burnett machines. Burnett is a brand that is owned by Bernina and they make really good value sewing machines. You can find Burnett's also at Bernina dealers, but you can also find them on Amazon or on the Burnett website. Burnett has a range of machines and they start as low as $200. So for the B33, the Burnett B33 sewing machine, it's somewhere between $200 and $300 and it is a great machine for you to get started on. If you're looking to invest a little bit more money in your sewing machine, you can work up to on the lines of the Burnett's and you can find all the information about the sewing machines, the Bernina and the Burnett's on their website. But now I'd like to share with you some features that I love in a machine. And again, I just wanna repeat this just so you all know, you do not have to have all of these features to make your first quilt. You can make your first quilt on any sewing machine. However, if you decide to get into it and you want to quilt more, these are things that will make quilting easier for you. And because it's easier, it's way more enjoyable. So let me show you the things that I love. This is a sewing machine that I sew on. It's a Bernina B770 Quilters Edition Plus. It has every single feature that I could ever need and it's a wonderful, wonderful machine. One thing that I love that I did just get is this extension table. This is a plexiglass extension table that fits specifically with my machine. Now these extension tables you can get from SewSteady.com and they custom cut them to fit your machine. So you just specify what sewing machine you have and they can cut this plexiglass table to fit your machine. So it's not exclusive to this 770. You can get these to fit lots of different machines. The reason why I love this so much is because it gives you a huge workspace. And when you're working on a quilt that is large, maybe after you have your blocks sewn together or if you're working on big blocks, it gives you a lot of space to feed the fabric through the machine and it helps hold it up evenly so your fabric isn't draping off of this side of the machine. This table extends out far in the back, so even once I feed it through the machine, it's still holding it level, so there's nothing tugging on my fabric as I'm sewing. All sewing machines have different feet, and each foot is designed specifically for a font with a function in mind. So I like to use a quilting foot that has a quarter of an inch guide, because when we piece quilt blocks, 
the seams in them are quarter of an inch. So this specific foot I love, it's 57D, it goes for the Bernina, um, and it has this quarter of an inch guide right here that will help me line my fabric up and as I sew the fabric will go right next to this quarter of an inch guide and feed through with a quarter of an inch seam that's perfect so I love this and if you do not have a Bernina uh, you can get these feet for other machines too it won't be the Bernina foot but you'll look for a foot called um, you know a quarter of an inch quilting foot or quarter of an inch quilting foot with guide so you'll just want to look for that and this is this foot that I specifically use when I'm piecing, piecing quarter of an inch seams. Now you don't always need a quarter of an inch foot. Sometimes we just need a standard foot. So this is called the reverse pattern foot. This is the 1D foot for Bernina. And I use this pattern um, at other times when I'm sewing. Now in the Nona quilt, it's very beginner. So we will only be using the quarter of an inch foot. But if we were working with triangles or other shapes that we might get to in uh, a, you know, a second level quilt along, you would want something like this. This is, usually it's the standard foot that comes with your machine. So um, usually you don't have to buy anything extra, just the standard foot because you want something nice and flat on the bottom, no guide, so that it can sit flat and run over your fabric nicely. The other feature that is wonderful in a sewing machine is lighting. Now you can see here, you can see the reflection in my table and also you can see how lit this is. Lighting is key. So if the machine you have doesn't have good lighting and you really want some, you can buy small LED strips that you can cut. Uh, I've seen them on Amazon before uh, and they're very small and what you would do is you would tape them they're, they're usually they are usually sticky and you would just stick them to the underside of your machine and then they could be battery powered they could be plug in whatever it is and then you could use those when you're sewing if your machine didn't have good lights this machine has great lights so i don't feel the need to have anything like that one other thing that i feel like it's important to mention is Again, I'm gonna refer back to the quarter of an inch seam. When we're quilting, the quarter of an inch seam is really important. Now here on this, I have, this is marking the quarter of an, a quarter of an inch um, seam. I use this washi tape to do it. There is a tape called diagonal seam tape that would do the same thing. You could purchase that and follow the directions. You could make lines with Sharpie and a ruler on your machine yourself to mark out lines uh, so that you can help as we go through making a quilt, I'll show you why this is useful. I just want you to know that, you know, you might be looking for something like this. A lot of machine extension tables, which this is a clear one, so it doesn't have it. It does have a ruler, but it doesn't have anything marking the positions of the needle. Now, some extension tables though, have markings on them. So let me show you. This is the extension table that actually came with my B770 QE Plus, and it has all these marks marked on it. So I did not feel the need when I use this to have any other marking, any washi tape, diagonal seam tape, lines drawn on, because I could see this center line here was always in line with my needle unless I move the position. And then I have a quarter of an inch on each side, five eighths, one inch. So this was fantastic. I did not need to mark anything. The reason why I didn't use this is because I wanted a bigger table to help hold up my quilt more. So when I switched to this clear one, you'll see that while it does have this ruler here, there's nothing coordinating the table to the needle position. And that is why I have this marked with washi tape. Now I might change this in the future. I seem to love Sharpie lines better than washi tape. So I may mark this out with Sharpie, but for now I have this here and this side of this is directly in line with a quarter inch from my needle. So when I'm sewing, I can keep my fabric in line with this washi tape and I know that I'm sewing at a quarter of an inch. And I'll also have my guide on, so that helps directly when I'm right under the needle. But when I'm working with a bigger piece and I'm holding it out here, I know that it's quarter inch up here because I'm gonna have my foot with my guide on it, but it helps me keep the fabric in line correctly all the way back here, so I'm feeding it through evenly at a quarter of an inch. Now when we're piecing a quilt, we are going to be using a straight stitch. So I get asked about straight stitch machines all the time. So that's a sewing machine that will only do one stitch, a straight stitch, no other shape. 
uh, a straight stitch machine would be fine as long as you don't want to access any of the decorative stitch functions that some machines might have. If you're strictly quilting, that might work just fine. If you wanted to get into making anything else that required a zigzag stitch or any other decorative stitch, you wouldn't be able to do that on a straight stitch machine. Another thing that I look at when I'm considering a machine is how fast it can stitch. So my Bernina can stitch a thousand stitches per minute. Now, that doesn't mean that you always have to use it at that high speed, but it does mean that when you're comfortable feeding your pieces through and maybe you have a really long straight piece, you can go to top speed at your machine and get through that really quick. If your machine stitches slowly, it's gonna take you longer. And that might be fine, but it is something to consider because it's going to add time to how long it takes you to create something. Another consideration is how are you going to quilt the quilt? So. When you're making a quilt, the first thing you do is sew the little pieces of fabric together here to make the quilt top. You make blocks, you sew the blocks together, and that becomes the top of the quilt. The front of it is beautiful like this, and the back of it has all of your seams. Then what makes it actually a quilt is laying the top that you just made, batting, which is an insulation layer used for warmth, and then a backing, which is another layer of fabric. So most, op most often that is like one continuous fabric throughout. On this quilt here, I have this red as my backing. So what makes a quilt a quilt is when you have those three layers and then you sew them together. The sewing them together is called quilting. You only need a straight stitch to piece your quilt top, but when you're quilting it, you need to consider do I want to be able to use a decorative stitch here? It's very common to use a straight stitch to quilt your quilt. And by straight stitch, I mean the machine is stitching up and down in a straight fashion. It's not doing any kind of move, the needle's not moving, it's not giving you a different shape. So you can stitch straight lines, uh, or a lot of machines, you want the option to have free motion quilting. So what would happen there is you'd put a foot on, a different, a special quilting foot on, you would lower the feed dogs of your machine, and then you will move the quilt around, making a design as you stitch. Now the needle is just still stitching straight up and down. The needle's not doing anything, you're doing the moving. So there are straight stitch machines that have the option to free motion quilt, and you can make any kind of design that your hands can move, uh, and your needle is still only stitching a straight stitch. So while it might be a lot, because you don't know, maybe if you, this is your first time, you don't know what you'd like to do in the future, um, it is something to consider the way you want to quilt the quilt. Another option is if you only wanna sew the top and you don't wanna quilt it, there are people in the quilting world called long arm quilters, and you can mail your quilt top, your batting, and your backing to them. They will quilt it for you on a specialized machine and then mail it back to you. Some people are lucky enough to have local long arm quilters and they can just drop it off at their shop. And uh, some people like me <laughs> don't have any around them and they rely on the mail for it but it is a wonderful option if you're not interested in quilting it yourself. You can love piecing and not love quilting, and that's okay because you can still make quilts with the help of a long arm quilter. So I think that covers it for machines right now. If you have any questions, please, please, I'd love to answer them. Leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to help you out. Don't let the sewing machine and the intimidation of it be a barrier to you starting a fantastic hobby. Whatever machine you can get, even if you're starting with the lowest model, is fantastic. And if you continue with it and love it, you can save up to buy a nicer machine in the future, but just start where you are. Thank you for following along, and I will see you back here tomorrow where we're going to talk specifics of fabric. See you then.